you need these 40 parts to build a PC and some of these PC building parts may not be as obvious as you think. So stick around, let's take it out. Hey Nimtex and welcome, this is Ash from Hilmai Tech and if you want to unleash your true potential, you can start by subscribing, enable the bell notification icon so that I can help you go from newbie to techie. Also, please remember to use my Amazon affiliate links. On this channel, we do reviews, repairs and tutorials of tech, but this series is called the One PC to Rule Them All Challenge Series, where we're trying to put triple boot OS on a single system, Windows, Linux and Mac OS. And this is part 11, go watch my previous part to understand what we're doing and at the end of every video i usually give you a poll to vote in the youtube community tab so go down and check it out for what we're going to vote on for the next episode now despite the fact that i've made a complete troubleshoot a desktop pc series where you may have led lights on or fan spinning but there's no display on the monitor and i have identified 10 components or 10 parts that you can easily assess to be able to troubleshoot and repair or replace that you can watch that series up there i'm proposing that you need to consider these 40 parts to completely build test and use a PC. Of course this is going to be an ideal list in an ideal situation. Not everyone is going to need absolutely everything. This is not an essential or minimal list. The idea is that once you start to build a PC you should have at your disposal all the tools necessary to be able to test it and use it and troubleshoot it if necessary. So some of the things I'm going to mention will not be applicable to you specifically and some of these things if you don't have them with you because you haven't thought about them before it's going to be a problem for you to continue using testing or building your PC. Now for this list we are also assuming that each part actually does work they're not kind of defective or dead on arrival and some of these parts although they should come together as a package if you buy them brand new but you may be surprised some cheaper models don't come with all the accessories that you need or especially if you are buying in the used market you may get the main core component but you're not going to get the accompanying accessories and lastly regardless of the platform that you choose whether it's AMD Nvidia or Intel and regardless of your budget these are the things that you're going to need eventually it's really and truly just 30 things and there's a bonus 10 things at the end but we'll go through this now come closer number one what you're going to need is a AC power cord for your SMPS or your PSU or your power supply unit. Now you may be surprised to know that not every power supply will come with its own AC cord and obviously these usually tend to happen with cheaper models. The higher end models should come but it's worthwhile to check especially if you're buying used so that's one. Number two you've got your SMPS which is called the switch mode power supply or power supply unit for short and of course we're assuming that if it's a semi-modular power supply or a modular power supply they also come with all their relevant cables like this is the graphics PCI uh, cable so make sure you've got these uh, as a complete set. The reason I didn't count these as two is because a lot of people can actually use a non-modular power supply which comes with all the cables obviously number three if you move to the right we've got some case fans now you may argue why case fans and yesterday we did a video on uh, cleaning a computer including case fan and airflow tutorial go check it out some cases will come with at least one fan maybe two fans but some cheaper cases may come with no fans whatsoever or if it comes with only one fan like in the front of the rear you're gonna have to add another fan for better airflow again in the used market you may have this problem or it may come with really crappy fans which is very loud so you may want to swap that for a lot less uh, silent fan number four obviously you need a case although it's not absolutely essential to build a pc in a case but it is very ideal number five you need a motherboard obviously and do not forget to check its io shield now i've counted this as one the io shield is not absolutely essential your computer will work without some people can geek out over this but it is still better to have it to control dust number six a speaker cable that connects to your motherboard and we've talked about this extensively on our troubleshoot series not every motherboard will have a speaker cable whereby you can troubleshoot or check for successful posts like with the beep codes now the reason i'm including this is because a lot of people underestimate or forget this so you should try to get yourself and these things they cost so cheap i bought a pack for about a pound or two okay now on the same token i've added the CMOS or the BIOS battery, this is a flat battery usually, which again, it should go hand in hand with the speaker cable accessory because again, in the used market, sometimes you may buy a motherboard 
and the battery, the CMOS battery is dead, you need to be able to swap it. And it has helped me in a lot of situations. These two together, you can buy a pack of 10 each and keep if you're planning to build a lot of PCs or troubleshoot a lot of PCs. Number seven, you've got the processor or the CPU or the central processing unit. Number eight, obviously make sure that your processor comes with this cooler, a stock cooler, or if you want a better cooling, that would be an aftermarket cooler, which is number eight. Number nine, you're definitely going to need some RAM sticks. Number 10, you're going to need a graphics card or GPU. Number 11, which a lot of people, again, don't think about, are video cables. Now, you may assume, again, you should get your VGA cable or DVI cable or HDMI cable or DisplayPort, whatever you get, you should get that with the purchase of your graphics card, but it's not always necessary. Plus, you may have a monitor which does not uh, fit the right uh, cables or have the right ports in which case like this one for example is a DVI to HDMI which I use for one of my configuration so you will need video cables just bear in mind to get the right one number 12 you're gonna need storage and minimum it should be one disk like either an SSD or an NVMe PCI or even a hard disk drive. But I would argue that in 2019, actually it's been for a couple of years now, the price for SSD is so cheap, there is no reason why you can't or shouldn't get an SSD minimum. You can get an SSD just for your OS and then if you need to add storage later, you do that. But I would never advise in today's market, if you're trying to build a PC, to skip on the SSD aspect, okay? This is absolutely necessary for performance. Yes, you may not have the budget for a big drive and SSD at the moment, but I think if you're trying to scrunch and uh, save money anywhere that you can, I think the SSD is where you should not um, be too stingy on try to get yourself an ssd they are very cheap these days number 13 you've got data cables these are sata data cables again you should not assume that you are going to get it with your motherboard or with the purchase of your drive it, it doesn't always come just make sure you check that if not you should have yourself some of these you can buy them very cheap online and uh, especially again in the used market you may not get them number 14 obviously you're going to need a monitor no doubt about this for this one we're assuming that your monitor should come with its own ac cord so i counted them as one number 15 a set of speakers and number 18 a set of headphones especially for gamers you may consider a headphone with its own microphone or get a microphone separately which you connect with your headphone now why i'm saying you need at least both these options eventually Although you may start out with only one, like a headphone or a speaker set, you will need both. There's no one I've spoken to who eventually down the line, having a desktop PC for gaming is not going to need both. Even though your setup may be very small, at some point you're going to want to do it. Unless you've got no choice, in which case you may uh, be living let's say, in a dormitory and you can't really use a speaker, you're going to have to stick with a headphone. But ideally, it's both. Number 17, you're going to need a media on which you're going to install your operating system for installing on your computer obviously now the de facto one is a usb these days this has got a windows installation disk on there however there are older or other types of installation from os perspective which can be done from a like a cd drive or dvd drive now i know what you guys may say at this stage who uses dvds anymore you're right modern people don't use anymore however for my situation anyone who is in my situation like in the repair industry sometimes we do have to access a dvd and even for recording i do remember this one tv station that approached me to do work for them we had to i had to actually convert some uh, uh, file format and then uh, burn them to dvds there was like 20 or so series and they would only accept a very specific format of dvd no usb no hard disk nothing which was handy for them because their license was depending on that another story for another time but the point is you may come across situations where you would need to access a dvd source the other reason if you're a gamer there may be some retro gaming that only exists on a dvd format or on a cd format which you may have access to but i would say if you can afford it, get yourself a DVD. All of my systems have at least a DVD. We don't use them much, but I did do one video on the channel where I was showing how to burn a CD for a car player or a very traditional mp3 player not mp3 a traditional uh, radio player you can watch it up there number 18 of course you're going to need a keyboard number 19 you're going to need a mouse 
Number 20, you're going to need at least a way to connect uh, internet to your computer. Now, traditionally for desktop, it's going to be an Ethernet cable, whether it's CAT6 these days, which is probably the highest one. I'm not sure someone can correct me. But at the very least, you may choose a wireless option, in which case you're going to need a Wi-Fi card for your uh, computer. Some motherboards do come with wireless cards built in them. Some other situations, maybe you need a USB dongle for wireless connection, whatever the case is, but you're going to need internet connection. But if you're a genuine, true, competitive gamer, wired internet connection, fiber optic is the way to go. Number 21, absolutely a minimum of a screwdriver, Philips, uh, you absolutely need. This is your main tool, to be honest. 22, which I don't have, is a, an equivalent of a magnetic tray because you don't want to lose your screws, but you can put it in a container or whatever. 23, you're going to need a cutter to cut your zip ties and whatnot. 24, talking about the zip ties, you're gonna need either zip ties or twisty ties, or my recent favorite is like a Velcro strap-ons, which you can reuse. Number 25, you're definitely gonna need some extra thermal paste because yes, you are gonna make mistakes when you seat your processor or wrongly seated, or you have to test temperature or even swap thermal processor or swap your cooler. So you're definitely gonna need extra thermal paste. 26, obviously you're gonna need some alcohol to clean your thermal paste off your cooler and your processor. Number 27, you're gonna need a sort of wipe, like cotton pads or wool or tissue or whatever you use to be able to use the alcohol. Number 28, you're gonna need a non-static uh, work surface area. And if you don't want that, have that because you may be in a bedroom where you only have fabric stuff, like you, you have carpet and you've got a bed, you've got a sofa and your table is full, you have nowhere to build, and you think you should build this on a uh, carpet. This is a bad idea, you're gonna build up static, you may fry one of your components, so you need an anti-static surface, whether it's wood or whether you use cardboard or whether you use an anti-static mat that you buy specifically for that, but you need that is very important. And number 29, you're going to need an anti-static wrist bracelet like this one, which you're gonna to connect to a metallic part of a device which is connected but switched off. Alternatively, you're gonna to need to work in a way whereby you have a metallic part which is connected but switch off that you can touch occasionally to discharge yourself of static electricity. And number 30, last but not least, you may think what else would you possibly be needing? We've got all this stuff probably overkill as well. Number 30 is a spare desktop computer minimum that has got the same operating system of the same version that you're trying to uh, install on your PC. We'll explore on that a bit later. Why do I say a desktop computer as opposed to a laptop or a smartphone? Because if it's your first time especially, not only do you need to access the internet to find out information while you're building, but you also need to check certain things for the build process. So ideally, you want to be able to get the same desktop computer uh, with the same platform and we'll give the reasons for that later. So those were my 30 parts that you absolutely need or more or less some of essential, some are a bit optional, but I feel ideally you should have all these at hand because what you want to do is avoid situations whereby you're in the middle of a build or a test or use and you haven't got like a speaker cable to test for troubleshoot, you haven't got some alcohol wipe to take off your thermal paste and replace them and you have to kind of delay, get them and it's the middle of the night, you want to avoid all this. And these extra things which I've mentioned, which you may not have at your disposal you haven't thought about, they don't cost a lot of money, which reminds me, I haven't done a total cost for all these 30 components, which should be a video for another time because this mileage will vary from person to person so if you guys want a video about the actual cost of everything because a lot of build guys don't even include things like the windows copy or these other excess stuff that you may have under access for your budget so if you want to watch that let me know in the comments below now i can already see it some of you are typing where is the 10 remaining ones because i mentioned 40 at the beginning of the video and i've only shown 30. now the last 10 like i mentioned is to do with this desktop pc because ideally what you want to do is have the exact same platform and the exact same components to do your own build on in terms of you need to have access to a friend who has almost similar desktop to you the reason is because of the troubleshoot series we've done and where I mentioned 10 and those 10 will add to the 30 which makes it 40. Often due to my troubleshoot series a lot of people complain to me that they don't have access to for example a certain motherboard to be able to test their CPU or vice versa and unfortunately without having access to the parts it is almost impossible for a single person 
to use even a multimeter and test individual components of any PC. So this is why I'm saying it's an ideal thing to do. You may want to check configuration. If your GPU isn't working or doesn't give you the exact drivers or the performance, you may want to swap it to test. It's for these types of consideration. Okay, now if I have forgotten anything that is usually required to include in a building of a PC in terms of building, testing and using, let me know in the comments below and everyone can benefit from it. And at this stage, I think we are done with uh, everything that I can think of. I have nothing else to share with you. So unless any one of you have any other options or advice or suggestions, what else we can cover? And I think the next step, which is going to be tomorrow, we have to crack on with the assembly. Finally, I will be doing an outside of the case assembly first, obviously just to test for successful post. So I'm hoping you're going to join us. Remember to subscribe and enable the bell icon notification. And also please remember to use my Amazon affiliate links. This video, by the way, was not sponsored. These are all the things I bought with my own money. But if you're a sponsor, if want to get in touch with me you're welcome my details will be on my home page or i might put it at the end of the screen but they're definitely gonna be in the description below so thank you so much for watching now go check out my troubleshoot series and also go check out the whole series on the one pc to rule them all challenge and feel free to share the video leave me a comment and leave me a like and i will see you in the next one this was ash from my tech helping you go from newbie to techie until next time peace out